It's Andre for the High Performance Academy and we're here with Doug from TCAT Performance Sensors. Now we're wandering around the show and we notice quite an interesting technology that TCAT are showing here at PRI, which is a built-in strain gauge which can be applied to crankshafts, drive shafts and axles to measure the torque being produced by the engine in real time as the car goes around the track or, or down the drag strip. Now often with seriously powerful cars, particularly thinking maybe top fuel dragsters, it's not possible to measure the power these engines are producing in the conventional manner on a dyno. So this is a way of measuring the torque the engine's producing in real time as it goes down the drag strip. So Doug, thanks for joining us. Let's just You're start welcome. with, uh, could you tell us what a strain gauge is? Sure, a strain gauge is basically just a series of resistors that are glued onto a surface, uh, usually a metallic surface. Um, the purpose of it is to measure uh, uh, strain within that surface. Uh, usually what happens is as a, as a rod is twisted or as a shaft is twisted, um, it produces a strain which will stretch those gauges and changes the resistance ever so slightly. Um, if you apply a voltage to those resistances, and their, their uh, resistance changes, you can measure the change in voltage, and that slight change in voltage, which might be in tenths of a microvolt, can be measured with a very high precision instrument, and then correlated to how much torque is placed on that shaft. So you can have a direct linear relationship between the amount of strain placed on it, or torque, and a change in voltage, and then uh, know exactly how much torque you've applied to the shaft. So what, what you're talking about here is measuring minute, absolutely microscopic amounts of twist in, in that shaft, correct? That's right. Uh, usually these strains are in, um, can be as low as a tenth of a micro strain, which means that uh, you're measuring one tenth of a millionth of twist uh, per unit length. So it's a very small amount of, uh, uh, if you had a one degree row, let, let's say you had a one, one foot long shaft, um, you would have one tenth of one millionth of one foot uh, twist in that shaft that you can actually measure uh, with this type of a system. Okay, now I, I can't get my head around what that looks like, but uh, it's safe to say that's a, a microscopic tiny amount of twist. And I, I can imagine most people can get their head around if you've got maybe a five, six foot long drive shaft, obviously there's going to be some twist over the length of that drive shaft which people can generally comprehend, but we're talking about measuring that over a very, very short distance with your strain gauge, correct? That's right. Um, the, the idea is that you can measure very small strains. You can uh, measure larger strains as well. Uh, obviously, the longer the shaft and the more torque you apply, the more strain that occurs and the more twist that occurs in the shaft. Uh, what else is important is typically in a drive shaft, uh, you don't really apply a constant torque. I mean, a piston is constantly moving. Um, on, uh, you have a rod that's applying a, a torque at a changing angle, so that torque signature changes throughout the rotation. So you have to be able to take the data fast enough to capture that torque signal as the shaft rotates. If you can do that, you can start to look at things like um, what is happening during combustion, for instance. Um, it, and uh, so it becomes important to have a, a rel relatively high frequency ability to measure that torque. And when talking frequency, what, what sort of frequency are you measuring at? We can measure at uh, two kilohertz as our standard system. Um, we are working on systems that will go up to closer to eight to 10 kilohertz, which is a nice signature frequency for measuring combustion signatures. Um, but uh, two kilohertz and lower is, is, is more than adequate for doing any kind of vibration type measurements and typical signatures that you might want to look at in a conventional uh, torque powertrain. Okay, so these strain gauges, are, the technology isn't exactly new, but your application, the way you're applying it to the automotive sense is quite unique from what I've seen. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're getting the signal out of that strain gauge and then measuring it? Sure, I mean the difficulty obviously on a rotating shaft is measuring uh, the strain. You cannot wire a, a shaft up uh, with wires uh, and have it survive very long. So we have a wireless system. Um, the problem with the wireless system is it needs power. So to get power to a wireless system, oftentimes you would have to have a stator or some type of a static inductive ring around it to bring power to it. Um, those are difficult to install. Oftentimes they're very difficult to place and have the right clearances. Um, there are other techniques as well. We have a battery powered system. Uh, obviously the, the challenge there is that in battery powered, a battery runs out of juice. And you don't really want to be tearing down an engine to recharge your battery. So our key focus has been on developing a system that is an ultra low power system yet is a highly accurate system, very small, very lightweight, and can measure very accurately. 
So capturing all of those elements of a system uh, makes it a very, a very uh, uh, good system to use in this type of an application. So because we're so low power, we can actually take data at a very high rate over hundreds of hours of testing time. And when you're not taking data, it can literally last months and months before you need to go into a recharge. So oftentimes that's long enough in between teardowns of an engine that you can recharge the rechargeable battery within an hour and you're back up and running for a few more months again. So you don't have to worry about recharging this thing in between rounds at the drag strip or in between races at, at the track. That's right. Oftentimes one charge is sufficient to get you through a season, especially in drag where you're not really using the car for very long. So let's talk about how we're visually able to see this data once you've got the, the wireless system transmitting somewhere. I'm guessing you can basically pick it up with a variety of, of uh, applications. What, what are you using to get that data? Sure. I mean, our, our goal is to take the data and then to provide the data in a variety of ways so that it can basically be brought into data acquisition systems. Uh, oftentimes it might be brought right into uh, uh, a race pack type system or um, a variety of different data acquisition systems. Uh, we simply have different types of cable connectors to allow it to do that. Um, the data comes digitally from the, re the turning remote that's actually on the shaft and is transmitted to a base system, but then from there it can either be brought digitally into a laptop over USB or directly converted back into an analog signal and brought into any kind of a data acquisition system and then time stamped with any other data that you might be taking. Okay, so once you've got that data and you've got it into your data acquisition system, in terms of calibrating it to get some, some data that is actually meaningful in terms of maybe newton meters or, or pound foot of torque, uh, how do you go about getting that? Yeah, calibration, uh, usually if it's a shaft of a very known um, cross-section, well-known cross-section and known material, you can uh, you do what's called a theoretical calibration, which will get you within 1% to 2% of knowing how to correlate voltage into foot-pounds. Um, if you have a, a rather unique cross-section, for instance, a connecting rod, or something that's not a uniform cross-section um, and a good theoretical equation that describes it, then you can actually do what's called a dead weight calibration. You literally would hang a weight from it, uh, if it's torque, you would hang a weight at some known distance from the radius. And if you know you're hanging a certain weight from it, you look at the voltage, measure the voltage, do that for a couple different points, and then that produces your linear uh, fit that you need to know how to translate the voltage into a torque. So with this system, it's fair to say this could become a replacement for the traditional dyno, and we could actually use this to get feedback on how the torque's changing as we're making changes to the ignition timing. Basically, it's a mobile dyno, correct? I would say that it uh, really uh, supplements the dyno. The dyno is still an important uh, tool for doing uh, development and in-lab testing. However, uh, oftentimes you need to know what happens in the vehicle. Um, the vehicle can actually be taking real data that can be brought back in a dyno environment and then used to do a better job of tuning to a particular road condition. So this really kind of provides you a dyno on the road, if you will. Um, the real advantage of it is that it, it's getting very high frequency signatures. Classically, a dyno has a load cell. There's a lot of mass inertia, which means that high frequency signals are typically dampened by the time you're measuring torque on an engine output. With this, you can actually put it right in the shaft and measure much higher frequency signatures, vibrations, things that you're not going to necessarily pick up on a dyno load cell. And so it really does have application both in the lab as well as on the road. With, with that ability to pick up vibration, as you say, at such high frequency, would it be a, a technology that could even pick up the changes in torque produced by a detonation event in the cylinder? You know, at high enough frequencies, you can actually look at detonation. You would have to have uh, higher frequencies than 2 kilohertz to really get good signatures of those. Um, we have the ability to do onboard acquisition at much higher frequencies. We're really limited in the bandwidth of the transmission. So as we increase our uh, ability to transmit in real time at higher frequencies, or as we develop additional tools to allow us to take high frequencies, store them on board, and then later download them at a lower, at a lower speed, we'll be able to look at, at very high frequency signatures such as detonation. Uh, Doug, it's a really interesting technology. I can see a lot of uh, real world applications for it and I'm excited to see where it goes. Look, thank you for taking the time to chat to us. Thank you, it was enjoying, enjoyable talking with you. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.